So we talked about what the chord progression was. So let's plug it into our app here. Let's go back just for a second into the chord name mode there. We have our first chord already laid out for us. The next chord after that was G. And then we're gonna go A minor. And then we're gonna add F. Then it goes back to C. Five one, turn around, occurs there. Back to C. So let's start thinking about some of the details specific to this chord progression that make it "No Woman No Cry." One of those things is if we're going to go back here to this to the second chord of the song. This G is actually a G over B. It's an inversion, and I can have that edited in the map and have it reflected in the sound by doing this. If I go, there's my inversion. The triangle because we want the third to be the base it's a G over B B is the third of G so that's what I want to happen here so now it's a G over B now we have this really cool descending line in the base which we'll touch on later so now that we have the chord progression for the song edited into the map we can now listen to it and hear what it sounds like by pressing the play button right there So there's the main basic theme, if you will, of the song, harmonically speaking. Um, we'll talk about variations on that a little bit later too. But you heard the descending bass line, maybe if you're listening closely, that we got by making that G chord a G over B, a first inversion G chord. So now, I also can do other things now that it's in there, hearkening uh, back to what we were talking about a second ago with seeing the chords functionally, seeing them uh, with regard to the map and how they relate to one another within this map. So I just pressed on this little 5-7 button over here to see the chord progression that I had edited at the top of the screen, still there, but now underneath it are each chord's function within the map, whether it's a 1 chord or a 5 chord, whether it belongs to this, this region or that region. And if I want to change the map to do that, also I press on the function button, the F, down there, and now I see the chords for what they really are what they really are to me, uh, in this case in the key of C, but that's almost irrelevant. If I see it as a one, five, six, four, I can transpose now a lot easier, first of all, and I can see the chords uh, for, for, for their essence, for like why they're there. Like why am I going from here to there in this region of the map? Yeah, C to G is just, those are just arbitrary names, right? C to G, G to A minor, A minor to F. But now we see them and their paths and how they navigate to and from one another within the map. And mapping tonal harmony really helps us kind of see that and visualize it. Most of us are visual learners, so that's a, another reason why the map and seeing it kind of really helps us understand a lot of the content we're gonna go over. So what we have here is already like a relatively simple and minimal version of the map, but to make it even more clear cut what we're doing with our song, we can get rid of all the superfluous information that's on here that we don't need. I'm just gonna click on the menu button up here and deselect all chords. So all chords relative to the key we're in in this version of the map. So now we're left with nothing but the four chords that Bob Marley used to create No Woman No Cry. And I can make it even less cluttered by getting rid of the nodes and paths and arrows. And now when I press play, you'll see each chord highlight as it's played so you'll know where, you'll still know where you are within the map and still be able to hear the harmony. So I really kind of want to put forth this idea and promote the notion that you want to see your chords in your song, even if it's something as simple as a full chord progression like this, functionally, and how they move to and from one another. So what we have here is a simple one, five, six, four. You've heard this progression a hundred times, maybe even more so. So there's a great video we're going to put a link to that really illustrates this idea of how ubiquitous or how common this one, five, six, four progression is and how it shows up in a ton of songs. And you may not even realize that, that fundamentally, harmonically, all these songs are the same. You know, No Woman, No Cry, Someone Like You by Adele, Let It Be by The Beatles, uh, Journeys Don't Stop Believing. They're all one, five, six, fours. They're all the same exact uh, chord progression. So what's the secret sauce of No Woman, No Cry? Like, why is it unique? What makes it it? 
if it's not the chord progression, if a hundred other songs have a one, five, six, four, what changes?